So in today's video, I'm going to be previewing Salford City versus Bradford City. And then in the second part of today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys my Game Week 43 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on their form. If you could try and 80 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so. And it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. What would your style 11 be as well? Would you make any changes from our most recent 1-0 win against Gillingham? Now, obviously, we meant to play on Tuesday. That game against Barrow was postponed on match day. Once again, the second time now this season, that game has been postponed. It's been rearranged for our penultimate game of the season, meaning, again, we've got three away games in a row. The season, for the large part, like I mentioned in the last match preview for us, is pretty much done. Salford City are in a very, very similar situation at this moment in time. They're currently 18 points off the playoffs so that is obviously mathematically impossible for them it's very unlikely they'll be dragged into the relegation battle as well but make sure to drop a like on there for me subscribe if you're new as well and let's get into it channel memberships are now cheaper than ever with tier 1 costing just 99p tier 2 has been reduced from 3.99 a month down to 1.99 a month and tier 3 has been reduced from 8.99 a month down to just 4.99 a month your support as always is massively appreciated and the more members that we have the better the content will be. Enjoy the rest of the video. If we start out then with how both teams have got on so far this season, my team Bradford City, we currently sit 13th in the table. After 42 matches, we've got 15 wins at 12 draws and 15 defeats, scoring 50 goals and conceding at 54, which leaves us on a minus four goal difference and 57 points. Our last couple of matches then have been a win, a draw, a win, a loss and a loss. Then last couple of matches then been a 1-0 win at home to Gillingham, a one all draw away at Grimsby Town, a 2-0 win at home to Tram Rovers, a 3-0 defeat away at Harrogate Town and a 3-0 defeat at home at Two Knots County. If we compare that then to Salford City, they currently sit 20th in the Skybet League 2 table. After 43 matches, they've got 12 wins, 11 draws and 20 defeats, scoring 62 goals but also conceding 78 which is the joint worst defensive record in the division. That leaves them then on a minus 16 goal difference and 47 points. Their last couple of matches have been a loss, a loss, a loss, a win and a win. Their last couple of matches have then been a 1-0 defeat away at AFC Wimbledon Wimbledon with Elliot Watt and Theo Vassell both getting sent off in that one so they are both going to be unavailable for this match. They also had a 2-1 defeat away at Walsall, a 2-1 defeat at home at 2 Salford City, a 2-1 win away at Notts County and a 3-1 win at home at 2 Morecambe FC. Obviously in the reverse fixture I'm pretty sure that finished in a 1-0 draw with Ryan Watson scoring for Salford City and Brad Halliday scoring the goal for the Bantams but now we're going to get into the team that I would go with if I was Graham Alexander. Obviously our manager Graham Alexander has previously managed Salford not too long ago. Got a sack there. Gary Neville came out and said that it was maybe a little bit harsh and sacked him too early. But in terms of the formation, I have gone with a 3-1-4-2. In goal, I've gone with Sam Walker. Absolutely outstanding since he has come in from Charlton Athletic. Absolutely no complaints with, with his performances for the large part. Apart from maybe sometimes when a ball gets played over the top, he should come off his goal line a little bit more. That's the only slight criticism that I do have of him. But on the whole, a massive improvement on Harry Lewis and definitely should start in this this one into my back three then at right centre back I've gone with Daniel Igoke as good as Jonathan Tompkinson is and has been under Graham Alexander so far I think it would be very harsh to drop Igoke he was really good in the last match against Gillingham I thought dealt with their physical threats very well and since that Harriet game I have been quite pressed with him, impressed with him sorry so I'd like to see him get the start again in this one in the middle I've gone with Matty Platt could this be one of his last appearances in a Bradford City shirt I hope not he's been outstanding for us this season when he's been fit and available comfortably our best centre half the most important centre half this season for me in my opinion and if they play Matt Smith he's a very big physical striker and Matty Platt I think would be probably our best centre half to try and match him and at left centre back I've gone with Kieron Kelly a really really good player who has come on leaps and bounds this season and I'd like to see him get another opportunity in this one obviously he's here with the football club until the end of next season so you know, the more games that he gets the more time that he gets to develop and all that sort of stuff and who knows by the time the end of his contract comes around I presume we'll have the option to trigger it for a further year and as the holding midfielder I've gone with the captain Richie Smallwood I thought in the last match against Gillingham had a fairly solid game very good out of possession I think away 
away from home against a decent side like Salford. Smallwood is important. He can play that screen role in front of Matt Smith and you have Platt behind him. And I think, you know, if you double up on Matt Smith, yes, he's still a big threat, but it obviously limits his ability. So I would start Smallwood as the holding midfielder. At right wing back, I've gone with Brad Halliday. Absolutely outstanding in the last match against Gillingham and has been outstanding for the large part this season. Obviously, the club have put out the fans player of the year votes and I would be very surprised if Brad Halliday didn't win that. To be honest with you, he's been outstanding again this season and should start for me at right wing back. In terms of my two central midfielders, at first you have gone with Jamie Walker. You might think away from home, you might want to go a little bit more you know, defensive, have a Gilead in there or a McDonald, but that's not what I've gone with. I want to see goals, I want to see his attack and Jamie Walker certainly brings that attacking quality to this side. So he starts for me in central midfield, partnered by Bobby Poynton. Again, for very similar reasons. I want to see goals, I want to see attacking talent, some of these younger players getting an opportunity. And for me personally, Poynton has earned that over the last couple of weeks. In the away game against Grimsby, kind of got marked out of the game a little bit, but on the whole has been excellent for us this season. So he starts for me in central midfield. And at left wing back, I've gone with Tariq Wright. In the last match preview that I did for the Barrow game, I said, you know, Richard should come in because you're playing against a good side away from home. You want to be a little bit better defensively. But Tariq Wright, against one of his former clubs who he want to look to get one over on, I'd like to see him get another opportunity in this one. I think at wing back, it suits him much more than as a winger in a front three, especially in Graham Alexander's system. I thought against Gillingham, that was his best performance since returning to the football club. And, you know, he scored goals, got assists in other appearances. But Wright, I think... It, I think Alexander's system suits Tariq Wright best to play at left wing back. And leading the line then as my two strikers, firstly I've gone with Andy Cook. It'll be very interesting to see how many goals he does finish on by the time the end of the season does come round. You know, we were looking at around February sort of time in potentially getting 25 goals, but they have dried up a little bit. Obviously, he had that injury as well. I think 20 goals would be a good target. It's a realistic target as well. I think that's what won a game or just less than won a game between now and the end of the season. He's got a few of his former clubs still to face as well. So, I'd like to see Cook get a start again in this one. And partnering him, I've gone with Callum Kavanagh. And a little bit of a spoiler, they would be the only two natural strikers in my match day squad. With the options we've got available on off the bench, I'd like to see Kavanagh get the opportunity once more. And I feel like the partnership that Cook and Kavanagh could create while we've still got these few remaining games, could be taken into next season. They're both here for a long time. You think you add Jake Young into that as well for next campaign. We've got a lot of attacking talent. It's just about whether we can keep them all fit and whether Alexander can get the best out of them all. On the bench then for me, that'll leave Colin Doyle, Jonathan Tomkinson, Lewis Richards, Kevin McDonald, Alex Gilead, Harry Chapman and Clark Adore. And the players currently unavailable are Sam Stubbs, Alex Patterson and Jake Young. So the players who miss out then through selection will be Ash Taylor, Liam Rydalg, Adam Wilson, Tyler Smith and Matt Derbyshire. Now the I'm going to get into my Game Week 43 League 2 score predictions. Starting out then with Crawley Town versus Colchester United, I'm backing the home side for a 3-0 win. Crew Alexandra versus Grimsby Town, I'm backing the home side for a 2-0 win. Doncaster Rovers versus Accrington Stanley, Doncaster have been on some unbelievable form recently and a, a genuine playoff contender, which is crazy to say. I'm backing them for a monumental 4-0 home win. Gillingham FC versus Barrow AFC, I'm backing the away side for a 2-1 win. Harrogate Town versus Sutton United, I'm backing the away side at 4-2-1 win. MK Dons versus Mansfield Town, a massive fixture. You think back to, I think it was 2019 when this was just as a significant a fixture in the same division. I am back in the Stags though, 4-3-2 win. Newport County versus Tranmere Rovers I think finishes in a one-all draw. Salford City versus Bradford City I unfortunately think finishes in a 2-1 defeat for the Bantams. I just feel like whenever we have games postponed and our momentum kind of gets paused, then we normally then go on a losing run. So I'm, I am unfortunately going to back us at 4 defeat. Stockport County versus Morecambe FC, I'm back in the home side at 4 3 1 win. Swindon Town versus AFC Wimbledon, I'm back in the home side at 4 2 1 win. Walsall FC versus Notts County, I'm back in the home side 4 2 1 win. And finally, Wrexham AFC versus Forest Green Rovers. I feel like Wrexham have played Forest Green about five times this season. I don't know why I think that, but I am back in the home side at 4 2 0 win. I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and get 80 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that I'd massively appreciate subscribe if you're new as well we're on the road to 9,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below let me know down below your score prediction for this match what would your start 11 be as well thank you all very much for watching have a good rest of your day and i'll see you on saturday for either a watch along or a match reaction i'm not too sure what i'm going to do yet you'll have to let me know down in the comment section down below which one you prefer peace